And once again, a very warm welcome to all of our attendees this morning. Uh, we thank you for taking the time out to be able to uh, learn about how Zoom works. Uh, for many of you who have already been on Zoom or using Zoom for work, uh, we appreciate that you've uh, done this move over. And we look forward to still hearing from you and interacting uh, with you via any digital form that you prefer. Now, the rest of this month, we are going to be looking at uh, safety versus plumbing, uh, basic safety for sites, um, and then just really getting into what you as the plumbers need out in the industry. Obviously, working together with IOPSA as well as SIOSH to bring you uh, the best in different techniques or developments uh, for health and safety, especially with COVID. Well, let's get right into it this morning. We're obviously looking at safety versus plumbing. Now, you might think to yourself, well, is it really uh, a verse? Is it a competition? Is it a match between safety and plumbing? Well, we have found that many of you out in the industry have been battling to marry the two, safety and plumbing. So we thought we'd start off with what is safety? Well, the dictionary definition is the condition of being protected from danger, risk, or injury, or it is also unlikely to cause danger, risk, or injury. Now, the definition of plumbing is a system of pipes, tanks, fittings, and other apparatus required uh, for the water supply, heating, and sanitation in a building. It's also the work of installing and maintaining a plumbing work done. And if you've ever said something this or felt this way, uh, you're not alone. There are many out in the industry, uh, specifically working on construction sites, that have had a ver very similar experience. And this is where we start getting to that whole, it's safety versus plumbing. In other words, it's safety versus us. Whatever we try and do, safety is always against us. And we want to try and change that idea. We want to show you that safety is actually working with you. It can assist you. In fact, a lot of times when we on site with you as the plumbers out in the industry, and we've, you know, obviously been on site with many of you uh, over the past year since we started at IOPSA, and, and I'm talking about ourselves personally uh, from OHSS, working with uh, many of your plumbers and uh, the teams that go out to your clients. What we are hearing back from a lot of the safety professionals out there is that the file is not being communicated. Um, they just want everybody to be safe on site as well as they finding that a lot of the files are generic and not site specific and we've obviously touched base on many of these things in previous toolbox talks but does that mean that the plumbers are wrong or the plumbing industry is wrong does it mean that the health and safety is overbearing or they're not really taking into consideration what plumbers do well no nobody's wrong uh, there's no finger pointing, there's no blame to be put on any person. What we want to achieve out of this toolbox talk is to really see that the task that we are performing uh, as plumbers out in the industry can be done safely because many are doing it very successfully and they are finding very good results in a behavior-based safety program. And so we've got a few suggestions for you uh, based on what we've seen in the industry, uh, the plumbers that we have worked with, as we mentioned, we've worked with you. And we want to just bring these two things together. We want to bring safety and plumbing together. And we got five ideas or five things that we'd like to discuss with you today on how you can get safety and plumbing to work together. And obviously, we know that many of you who are joining these toolbox talks are in health and safety. You are safety professionals. Uh, you obviously are seeing these things on a daily basis. Uh, you're seeing files not being implemented. You're seeing files not being communicated. Uh, you are noticing the expiries of letters of good standing that are not being updated, uh, medicals or IDs that aren't uh, being sent to you um, in the correct format, or even whole safety files uh, that are not completely in line with your safety specifications. And so we're just going to go through these uh, five things and discuss how it affects plumbing and how health and safety is also affected and show you that basically it works together, but it needs to start together. In other words, it starts right from your preparation and planning point of view. 
right from the start of you getting a job, right from the start of you quoting on a job. That is when health and safety should also start. And so we'll look at preparation and planning of your tasks. And then a very big one, risk. We'll look at risk because in any company, there is the matter of risk. And in plumbing, there is also risk. Uh, and we're talking here about business risk for your company. And we'll show you how this also is married into health and safety. We then take a look at procedures and policies and the combining of the two from methodology of the scope of work to the safe performance of that actual work. And then we'll look at creating a live site. And what does it mean to have something that is live? And then always remembering the very final point, remembering the routine. What is our routine? And we're going to discuss what is your routine as a plumber and how that can effectively work with occupational health and safety as well. So please remember, uh, when we start off safely, we want to finish off safely. So it's not uh, safety first. It is safety first and safety always. In other words, we don't just start safe, we finish safely as well. So let us take a look at preparation and planning. Uh, from preparation, this is you get a job, you know you need to quote on it, and you have to prepare to quote on it. And this means you need to source the correct products for your client. You need to then purchase these products at a reasonable cost. Uh, obviously, there's a huge battle out in the market at the moment where it's so difficult to quote on work and actually get it because somebody's underquoted you, perhaps uh, on the labor, because products are just so hard to come by at a very good rate. Or bigger corporates that uh, have bigger discounts can obviously cut their cost on the actual product, uh, but increase their labor cost, which means a bigger return for them. And so this struggle is definitely real. And you are seeing that all the time as plumbers out in the industry. And so sourcing and purchasing of products is extremely important. And then you design a resource list. And your resource list basically comes down to everything you need in order to perform that job, whether it's a geyser installation, uh, sourcing of hydroboils for your clients, or going in installing a full new uh, waste management system or water reticulation for your client. All of it comes down to a resource list. And oftentimes, this is working in conjunction with your quoted information. So you quote your client, and that becomes your resource list. You know that you need those items in order to quote the client. And timing will be a big one. Uh, when does your client need it done? How much work is it? And how long is it going to take you to get finished? Things with maintenance even. Something as small as going out and changing a cartridge or changing a tap uh, means that you need to source the correct thing for that job. Now, all of this can be married in health and safety. You see, the preparation of a health and safety plan means that you need to source uh, the correct procedures, the correct uh, systems, perhaps even the correct personal protective equipment, uh, the correct equipment, tools, or even uh, the right type of training that you need for your staff. And so you plan just like you plan for the job or the task that you're performing, such as installing that geyser, it would be the same as planning the safety part of installing that geyser. And this comes down to your methodology, the step-by-step -step process of installing it. Now, all of us have a format or a way that we work on site. And we can look at any task, any company, even aside uh, from plumbers. Every task has a step-by-step -step procedure of performing that specific task. And so while we are performing it, there are certain tools, pieces of equipment, or even products that we are going to be using while performing this work. And this means that the resources we are currently using that we've sourced and purchased and that we've put into a list, we've allocated time to it, it needs to be inspected. It needs to be checked to see if the product that we are providing is quality. Now, the same inspection can be done when it comes to an on-site inspection of the actual work, such as uh, just doing a job observation of the employees performing the work. And you can marry the two documents if you want. You can see whether the correct uh, 
Giza is being installed in the correct manner. And at the same time, also check whether it is being done safely, whether there is a risk assessment, a method statement, and a safe work procedure for the tools and equipment being used. Things like maintenance logs. Uh, you need maintenance logs to check the quality of the tools that you are using. Well, these same maintenance logs are going to go a long way in assisting your actual equipment from the health and safety perspective to be in a good condition. Things like working at heights, ensuring you have a full body harness, uh, your ladders, your drills, your grinders, all of these have certain maintenance items. And so your register and checklist to check these items will become part of your safety file. But it is also part of running the company. And so these two things are not uh, interchangeable, but they are always together. You do not swap one out for the other. In fact, the running of your company and the running of your safety file works together because the same maintenance log you need to run your company as a plumber is the same maintenance log in a register and checklist format that you will need to put into your safety file. Now, the planning also means you have to allocate a team. So let's go to the suggestion box. We're going to give you just three things. When you are discussing a project, perhaps a new client, we want you to include safety questions when purchasing any products, materials, or tools. In other words, when you are starting the preparation and planning phase of your project, we want you to ask three questions. Now, there's a whole lot more that we can ask. And many of you safety professionals out there will say, well, actually, there's 100 questions you must ask. And we agree with you. There are 100 questions, perhaps even more. But what we are saying is, where do we start? Where do we start by just showing you that safety and plumbing is really not this huge battle against each other? In fact, they work together. You could ask yourself, what hazards will arise when installing this geezer that I've just bought? What hazards may arise uh, on the tools or equipment that I need to install this geezer? And this can be done right at your preparation phase. When you are purchasing that product, when you're purchasing that piece of equipment or the tool that is needed to perform the work, you see, when you create your resource list, automatically next to that list, you could outline the hazards that will arise with each of those pieces of equipment or tools. Then uh, you can ask yourself, what PPE do I need in order to keep myself safe from that? Now, there's other procedures, there's methodologies, there's administrative uh, things that come into play to keep you safe. PPE is always the last form, uh, but we also realize that PPE sometimes does not really fall into a purchasing or resource management policy within companies. You see, we go to our local builders, we pick up whatever we think, gloves, goggles, boots, that is necessary to perform the work without matching the PPE to the employee. And so we need to ask ourselves, what PPE should I use? Now, this question can also be directed at the manufacturer of your equipment that you are installing. It could be directed at the supplier of the tools that you are purchasing. You could ask them, what is the best PPE for this? And get the direction from them. You see, it can all go hand in hand at the same time while you are doing the preparation for the actual job. And when you do that, it's not going to be additional time that you need later on when you actually don't have the time because now you need to be performing on site. Then all the safety issues come up and now you have to go and reinvent the whole wheel because you need to start from the beginning on your planning and preparation stage. Whereas if you included that, you could already have all this information. The third question you want to ask yourself is, do you need training on any of the above steps? So if you are installing a geyser or a hydroboil, is there training that is needed for the specific equipment that you are using? You see, no one installation is exactly the same as the other. A geyser might be installed on a wall, inside a roof, in a ceiling. It could be up a scaffold on top of a roof. You could ask yourself then, well, what type of training do I specifically need not for the geezer installation, but for the environment that I'm going to be putting my employees in. And now it will help you uh, to be prepared and have advanced planning for the health and safety 
of that project. Now, the, another two things that we looked at was risk as well as procedures and policies and combining those two things. Now, for a company, your risk would always be time management. Uh, your risk could be lack of money from underquoting or losing the job due to overquoting, or perhaps if problems arise and if we haven't given ourselves uh, enough meat on that job, we could find ourselves uh, working just at cost, just to keep our companies going. And this is often uh, the case with many of us in the situation that we find ourselves in. And if we start lacking on the time and the money or rushing it and underquoting, we find ourselves losing quality. And this directly affects our reputation. In fact, there's also a risk to our employees. Not only can our employees provide a risk to the actual work that we perform uh, by maybe taking too long on a project, uh, damaging things and costing money, or perhaps not doing the work uh, to the right quality and thus affecting our reputation, there is also a risk to the employees. You see, if they are rushed in their job, they could make a mistake and cause an accident. Uh, if perhaps we don't budget enough for the actual health and safety part of it, we could indirectly be injuring or causing an exposure to injury to our employees because we are not giving them the right tools and equipment to work with. This again will start affecting the quality. And so you can see how these two things marry each other. Health and safety and plumbing actually work together because if it is safe, you will notice that it doesn't take extra time. It can be done in the same time. Because if you've ever had an accident, you will realize how much longer it takes to get that job done when an accident has arisen. All work stops. You need to investigate that incident and something needs to be changed in order to ensure that accident does not occur again. We also realize that it costs us money when we have accidents. And that is because people get sent home and we need to still continue to contribute to their income because it is an injury on duty. And obviously, if health and safety is not part of it, our quality will be sacrificed. And again, this comes back to our reputation. And the same goes for procedures and policies. As a company, you have a specific procedure, generally in line with your SAN standard, to install certain types of plumbing or certain types of equipment. And obviously, if you want to have an audit and uh, have the outcome be a certificate of compliance in order to give a guarantee to your client, you need to follow these procedures as well as have policies in your company to give that guarantee to your client. Now, most companies invest in a product or a name, a brand, or they back a company that they trust. And that company generally is offering certain things like SANS approved installations, ensuring that they get the audits to provide a certificate of compliance. And then they give that guarantee not only on workmanship, but also the quality products that they have sourced for their client. The same works with health and safety. You see, when we have a procedure to install that geezer according to SAN standard, there is a, a safety element in that. And so we want that same procedure to be married in our task. When we perform audits, not just on the work, but the entire working environment, including our file, this health and safety audit will give us the outcome of compliance. And that guarantees even more than your reputation. It guarantees even more than more work coming in. It guarantees life. And that is because health and safety protects a person from being injured on site. And if you can save just one life, well, it is worth it. So let's go back to our suggestion box. When you're ensuring your company and staff are ready to deliver a service, consider the following three things. Are your staff competent? You see, a plumber should be registered. They should be competent as a plumber, much like an electrician or any other job that we perform. We want to ensure that the person performing that job is competent. Well, the same is true with health and safety. And competency does not necessarily mean that that person has a certificate to prove that they've worked on hearts. But as an employer, 
you've gone to the degree to ensure your employees know and understand the tasks and the risks that they are exposed to. So the question you want to ask yourself is, do they actually know? You see, we can have a certificate to say we've attended a course, and that's good and well, and many times that is a legal requirement. But if you say to yourself that every driver on the road had a license, and because of that, the fact that they have a license means that they would never get into an accident, or we would be fooling ourselves, wouldn't we? And just the fact that some people have a license, would you automatically agree that they can drive, that they know how to drive? Or let's say somebody was driving off the side of the road uh, or perhaps into in oncoming traffic. Would you follow them? Because you reasoned, well, they have a license, so they must know what they're doing. And maybe I'll follow them because maybe they know a shortcut. Well, you wouldn't be wise to do that. Because the fact of the matter is, you want to ensure that you drive according to the law. And so you need to ask yourself, have I checked? Have I checked what the law is? Have I checked if my staff are competent? Have I checked that not only are they competent and that I've paid a training company to do their uh, certificates of competency, do they actually know what they need to do? So consider those three things uh, next time we decide to look at our risk, as well as ensuring the quality of the policies and procedures that we are putting into place. Now, the last thing is creating a live file and remembering the routine. Anything that is live is something that is functional and that is working constantly. So much like a clock, it would only be live if you saw it ticking. If it wasn't ticking, well, it's not live. So when we come to work, there are certain breaks that we would take. But it, generally, if you walked onto a site, the employees should be working. Working means it is live. In other words, the, the site is actually continuing. And you would notice you have good supervision in place and they would communicate with you and the employees and your client. And oftentimes there's a little bit of a reporting structure that needs to be put in place. All of this is exactly the same with health and safety. You see, a live site means that the safety file you designed and implemented and put on site is not just sitting in your cubbyhole or inside the safety manager's uh, desk or perhaps just left inside of a shelf. You see, that file is moving in and around with us. It's constantly being checked. It's constantly being monitored. Communication is going back and forth to employees, from employees, back to your client, back to yourself. And there's a certain reporting structure that should be put in place. And those reports often help you to determine whether the task is going according to plan, according to what you quoted, especially if you are installing certain plumbing. You want to know that that report or that project is actually functioning. The same with health and safety. That report is going to assist you in understanding are your team members, are your employees working in conjunction with a health and safety file? Is it working? And this report often comes from the health and safety officer on site in the form of an audit. What is it saying to you? Is it saying there's a deficiency or a gap? Or is it telling you how well you are doing in upholding health and safety? Because that goes a long way to show you what type of quality installation we are also providing. So remember the routine. There are certain things in plumbing that need to be done daily. There are certain tasks that must be performed weekly. And there are certain reporting systems as well as issues or whatever types of work that have to be done monthly. And these are the goals that we set for ourselves and our employees every day. The same is true with health and safety. But you need to bring those two things together. Every day, work in conjunction with the daily items that need to be checked, the weekly inspections, the monthly inspections, what goals you have set out in your health and safety policy. So let's, again, go to our suggestion box and consider three things. When you are on site, perhaps add a checklist to your job card, the job card that you are inspecting every day to see the installation is done correctly, or perhaps that your staff need to fill in to prove that they've done something on site. 
maybe ask yourself, was the safety file consulted while performing this work? And this, we basically mean, was it live? Was it actually recorded? Was something taken out of the file or put back into the file? Was it implemented on site? And then did you learn something new from that task? Is there something you learned in the actual scope of work, perhaps the installation, or from a health and safety pers perspective that you can carry over to the next task? Something as simple as realizing the PPE uh, gloves perhaps that you used were not actually correct for that task that you're performing and you needed to source a new set of gloves made with a different type of material. And then do you have a record? You see all clients want you to have a guarantee as workman's guarantee, workmanship guarantee, or even a product guarantee. Well, what guarantee do you have from a health and safety perspective? Do you know what you need? Do you have that? Have you asked around what type of record you would like to have? Well, the best record is ensuring 100% safety on site for our employees because the saving of a life is really the most important thing. So thank you again.